Hi, this is Father Louis Gertie. Sister Mary Beth and I are going to chat about St. Lucy Filippini. Now, the first episode was about her mission and where she came from, but who is she and, and what's going on now with St. Lucy herself, her body, her, her being venerated, miracles, things like that. Um, so we have a whole bunch of episodes associated with the missionary sisters work in for the teaching sisters of Filippini. And we'll talk about that as we go along. But I think a little pause now and let's talk about St. Lucy Filippini. Yeah. Okay, we spoke a little bit about her family. She lost her parents when she was a child. Um, she grew up, founded the order with Cardinal Barberini. Barberigo. 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 You gotta get that name right. <laughs> and so what's the story now? Well, this is her 350th birthday, and one of the joys of this 350th birthday is they're going to transport her body from Monte Viasconi to Tarquinia, where she was born. Now, her body is intact. Mm. Now, there's a book. Tell them yes. what that means. Intact means you're, you're, in, you're incorrupt. And there's a book called The Incorruptibles, yes. and there are a hundred of them. And it's interesting. They have every incorrupt person that they have found has been a good person. They have never found an uncorrupt person person who was evil oh. very interesting yeah so um why i wanted to talk about it in, in 1998 someone broke into the saint lucy's urn it was a big glass coffin someone mm. broke in and they stole her ring and so the vatican has something called a recognition it's like an autopsy when a uh, uh, incorrupt body is broken into you have to have a doctor come from the vatican and they will um, examine the body to make sure that no one uh, you know hurt her in any way and so I was lucky to be there at the time. Oh, yeah. so they're authenticating yeah. that it's really her. Yes, yes. And so they took her from the cathedral where she usually was, and they put her in the convent of Monte Viasconi. And they ha they had the broken urn there. And so the day of the recognition, they were to the the cardinals from the Vatican and the doctor from the Vatican were there as official witnesses. And there had to be twelve official. Uh, lay witnesses, sisters and lay people as witnesses also. So uh, the first thing they had to do was to open the box and then move her onto a table so they could do this recognition. Oh, wow. So myself as the ugly American, I've got the camera. <laughs> I'm ready to go. And I would have been right there with you. Yes, that's, that's what made me actually think of this. You would have <laughs> loved it. And so um, I'm there all ready to go and the Italian undertaker says to me, well, aren't you going to help? And I'm thinking, help? <laughs> You know, and I'm seeing all these Italian sisters there too, and I'm thinking they're not going to want this American doing this. <laughs> and I, I, so he said, "Come on, help me." So I said, "Okay." So I put the camera down, and we, he opened the glass of the box, and so I had her head. One man had her middle section, and the other man had oh. her feet. We moved her to the table, and the doctor said, "No, no, it has to be a higher table." So we had another table. We moved her to a higher table, and so the doctor says, "Well, you have to take her clothes off," you know. And so we took, I took her hat off and I had to comb her hair and it was just, it was just something so special. So oh I, my God, you combed St. Lucy's so I gave hair. Her, I get, while I was combing her hair, I gave her a kiss on the forehead and the doctor has gloves on and he goes, be careful germs and yeah. things like that, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> the same here. So, so, uh, and then, you know, we, we took her um, clothes off and, you know, she had like a white uh, slip on underneath, whatever it was, and the doctor had started the process. And do you know when they collect relics, you know, people have relics, they're bones from people. And you're always wondering, well, where do these bones, how do they get them, whatever. Right, right. Well, when the person dies, someone comes in and takes some bones, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and that, and you saw her, you saw her shoulders, you know, someone had actually taken her clavicle and so, you know, other bones so that they would be able to have, have relics. relics. Mm. She also had had uh, fulminating breast cancer. That's what killed her. Oh, I know that. Yeah. And so when the doctor was doing it, he's explaining that, you know, that, exactly you know what killed her and things like that and he was examining to see that that you know the man that stole the ring didn't hurt her in any other way and as we went along at, at first i had the feeling the doctor he believed but it was like he was a little skeptical you know and he's he's checking her out checking her out checking her out well when we got to the legs 
the you know the calf is soft and he starts flexing her her leg and he's going wow that and he's flexing this oh leg. my goodness oh my god so everybody's screaming stop it you're breaking <laughs> you're you know? break it. but you could see the glint in his eye because at this point i had the camera rolling you can see the glint in his eye that he got it he knew that saint lucy was intact oh. you know it's just a miracle and it's not a miracle that a person is intact but as i said before incorrupt people are have all been found to be very good people you know it's just something but just to be in her presence so what they're, and the people of Tarquinia, she has never been back home. Oh, really? Yeah, since 350 years. You know, well, she left, I guess she left when she was 16. So since she was 16 years old, she, yeah. you know, has never been home. And so on May 12th, her body will be transported from Monte Viascone mm -hmm. to Tarquinia. So all the people will be coming to um, oh, pray near her, her body. It's oh just, a, just a wonderful goodness. thing. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And then on May 14th, the Holy Father will have a special audience for the Maestopia and all of the teachers and students and families that are in Italy. That Sister Shenza told us yes, about that. Yeah, so that'll be a wonderful occasion too. She says, 2,000 of my closest friends. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, yeah. And she was afraid she wouldn't get them, and now she has almost 3,000 people, so some people are not going to be able to come, oh. and that's too bad. You know? From all over the world? No, just Italy. Oh, just the Italians? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. God, 300. So, tell me about the body. I mean, I'm fascinated. Yes, uh, myself I, too. I'm, I'm going to ask pict for pictures. Yes, from myself you. too. <clears throat> uh, her face is fine. She has a little gray spot here, or a worn spot, I'd say. So they have put a cloth there, a, you know, a, a, some beautician or somebody put something there, you know. But her whole body is gray because there's no oxygen. Right. right. You know, but but she's fine. Her her hands are very thin. She must have been a very small person, you know, when you see her um, in the in you know in the coffin there. She was a slight person, um, but you know she still has the muscle on her arms and her legs, and, and wow. she's just she's just intact and just um, it's just something to see her. And she has this uh, quaint little smile, like you know, <laughs> what are you all looking at? Yeah. Yeah. That's and, great. Uh, very, very special. It is special to go see her. So if you're ever traveling to Rome, go to Monte Viasconi and you can see St. Lucy. Yes. I'm embarrassed. I, I was there and I didn't go up. Well, one day you'll come. I have to go back. Come, That's we'll we'll go yeah. back when you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It is very Now, is, it, is, is she replaced in a crystal oh, coffin? Oh, yeah. Sister Mary DeBacco, who was our mother general at the time, right. um, she remembered that they were putting in the uh, president's car at the time a, a bulletproof glass. Right. So she asked the Italian um, government if they had some bulletproof glass that we could use Stop. for her urn. Because she didn't want anybody else breaking yeah, it. Yeah, right, you right, know? right. So, so the new urn that's there has the bulletproof thing. And, and you know, and, and once we put the new habit on her, this was interesting. After we had um, combed her hair, one of the sisters braided it better than I could. And we put we got her a new bonnet. And one sister was in the back sewing away. And she made her a new bonnet. But when they put it on her head, all the sisters that went, went, no, you know, just didn't look right so she said so okay so she went back and she made another one came and it, and it was perfect oh. and so they put that one on her that you know they they it's uh, the original one the original, the original, habit. original okay. one and then <clears throat> um her habit you know they gave her a new habit and that was fine and the little shoes and uh just um tell me about the ring because yes when and i she, went to italy some of the sisters come into yeah, my we have a cross ring because saint lucy said your best book is the cross let, let me see if you can focus in on that just try and I've always, and if not, we'll take a still of it later. Yeah. And your, yeah, your best book is the cross. And so that's why we always keep it near us to remind us of that. St. Lucy did not have a ring. It was oh. not until when they exhumed her body the first time and they brought her up, they gave her the ring. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, miracles associated with her St. Lucy, yeah. Organization. Yeah. She had she had many before she even died. Yes, one one that I remember so well was a a young a young mother and she was working on the house and she hit uh, like a nail or something and she her arm got infected, got gangrene and she came to St. Lucy, you know, and the doctor said I have to cut it off whatever it was. So she went to St. Lucy before and St. Lucy said no, don't worry. And so then she she kept going on. She got by the time she got to the doctor you know, it was healed. Was, was healed. So wow. she's very lucky. Yeah, so many, so many good miracles. So when when the church is uh, canonized in the process of canonization, right. there are certain steps, stipulations 
And uh, how many miracles were attributed to her for the canonization? Uh, you have to have two. Oh, okay, that's yeah. right. So there were two attributed two. to her. And, and um, the associate that was with her is already a, a saint. Who, who was mm -hmm. that? They, Not of St. Lucy. Um, Rose Venerini yeah, that's a Rose, her, yes. became a saint after St. Lucy. Okay, really? but she wasn't a nun? She wasn't she was a sister? A okay, she and was. And they are the Maestro Pia Venerini. Oh, oh, it's a different... It's, it's another branch. It's their own branch. They were started before us. Oh. And when St. Lucy started the schools, the Cardinal said, you know, you need help. Let me get Rose over here to help you out. So right, Rose, right, right. Rose, was, Rose helped her out. But what happened, Rose was a strict um, Ignatian uh, teaching method, very right. strict and whatever. St. Lucy wanted to teach the girls, but to teach them and go to their homes and make sure everything was like that. And Rose, Rose didn't want to do that. Rose wanted just school, whatever it was. So at that point, Rose went her way and St. Lucy kept, continued to do her, mm. her thing. And that's that's still a, a very important charism that the sisters have. I remember in twos, sisters in Jersey City going shopping, going down what uh -huh. we call Brunswick Street for the groceries, uh, coming to my house, yes. having coffee yes. with my mother, bringing cookies, right. um, and and that I loved it as a yeah, kid. Right. Um, I wasn't, you know, like you know, teachers coming to your house. I wasn't never intimidated by right. them because they were always uh, loving. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it's. Is that from St. Lucy, the that, lovingness? Of oh, it? yeah, St. Lucy. She, she, her thing was to go out to the families. It's, a, it's the best way you know. If you go to a child's house and you see what's happening, you know, uh. you know what's happening, you know. And we did that for years here in America. I remember when I was in Philadelphia, my superior, uh, Sister um, Marion Bruno, she said, I want you to have visited all those children's families by November. Oh. I, had, I had 68 <laughs> Oh, no. Whoa. Stop. Yeah. So uh, so older sister, Jilda, she said, don't worry, we can do it. Every day we'd bop off three or four, you know, and we would do it and visit them. But it was the same thing. When you see, like one house we went to, the, the family was so poor and the mother was very sick. She had a, the dirtiest blanket on her, four dog hairs and everything like that. And, and when you see that, then the next day when you see that child in school, you know, Wake you know. Up. Yeah. Be kind to that child and go get a blanket for that mother, right. you know, and try to help them the best way you can. Otherwise, the kids are sitting there in front of you and you're like, well, how come you didn't do your homework? You yeah, know? right, right. You know? yeah. you, but it's a whole ministry. It's a, a holistic ministry. Exactly. I mean, the family, the the children, the education, the food, right. the Exactly. Clothing. Even the catechism, the whole idea of the catechism. If you're teaching a child in school, you know, and then you have them for catechism, you can understand the whole thing uh, so much better. And you, you're not just teaching catechism to the child. You're doing the mother and father because the child has to practice with somebody. Yeah. So you make your lessons so that they have to get involved with great, it too. Great, yeah. great. Oh, I, I, it's such an important aspect of ministry that mm -hmm. uh, and I remember as a child, because this happened to other kids too, uh, Sister Carmella was my third grade teacher. We we're buddies. I liked her. She liked me. And I would do favors for her. So me and another kid, Michael, would show up on Saturday and do things like maybe clean out the parking lot with the, the hose right, no and all bad. that. But whatever we did, come in afterwards. Just come in afterwards. Go in the back steps. And back steps led to the kitchen. Exactly. And she would feed us. Yeah. I mean, biscotti and hot chocolate yeah. and oh my oh, god yeah. oh I, ha I have a moment like that i was just at villa victoria it was like the first week i was there and i was a boarder and uh, i had i didn't go down to breakfast i was doing my homework and when i got to school sister helen in in a uh, homeroom she says where were you at breakfast i said i, I was too much homework i didn't she says oh she says, well, wait here. And I said, oh, boy, I'm going to get clobbered <laughs> now, you know. And so uh, after everyone left, she said, come with me. And I said, okay. And we're walking, and I'm like, oh, I'm dead here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And she brought me this little kitchenette, and she made me bacon and eggs. Isn't it was the sweetest how thing. How typical. Yeah, and I knew. I knew in a month that was the order I wanted to join. Absolutely. You know? Just because they... Uh, loving. It was loving, loving yeah. yeah. They always, yeah, they were very loving. Really? Uh, all my memories of the Holy Rosary, yes. you know, all the sisters. And, and I kept in touch with them till I was ordained and, and longer, you know, here, here I am now, almost 50 years ordained, I'm still by zans with the sisters. Yeah. And even for yourself, if, you know, if the sisters visit your family, when you go to school the next day, you're not going to misbehave because you know they might be, ah. they might be back, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's good for everything, discipline and uh, for the child's growth. Yeah. And, 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 and my mother's, and all the mothers of the kids were all involved with the, with the yes. church, with the schools, with right. the card parties, all those things that they did, the cook. Yeah. the sales and and that made a big difference for the nuns the sisters to know the, the mothers. mothers 
you can't, there was there was no place to hide. There was no reason to hide right. because they all knew you. Right. Uh, right on the street, they would see you walk across the convent. They wave. Yeah, it was very wonderful. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. So that's what we're still encouraging, right? We are in, yes, in our yes, in yes. your ministry. Exactly. That's yes, great. Yes. Certainly happening here and throughout the world. It is. It is happening. This I, has been wonderful. Thank you. I really, well, anything else you'd like to tell them? No, thank. It's good funny. I have been honored to be here with Sister Mary Beth and Sister Helen, who's not here with us right now, interviewing about St. Lucy Filippini. We know a lot about her. Go online, you'll find out more about her. We'll have the website for all the orders, information, international uh, website on our site. So tune in and find local Filippini near you and <laughs> make them feel at home. How's that? Very good, Father. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. much really appreciate it. God bless you and keep me aware, aware of what's going on. Let me hear from you. Father Lou Skirty at hotmail.com. Yep.